Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, uh, Silent Bob from all those terrible Jane Silent Bob type pictures, and you are listening to Thinking Outside the Long Box, comics talk for comics fans. We're on the road, we're going home, to the place where wild nerds roam, with pretty girls and dudes and kids, going to cons is our Buddy, and welcome to Thinking Outside the Long Box. My name is Thomas Strange, and with me are some of my very best friends who know exactly how to piss me off. The greatest guys you'll ever meet. First off, my good friend Josh. How are you, Josh? Uh, I'm just practicing what you're preaching, so I was wondering, Tom, could you, could you do that intro a little slower? Yes, I could. <laughs> I, I'm kidding. That was fabulous. I'm doing great. I'm doing so great that the magical sugar that's destroying my body uh, has turned around by some miracle medication. And now I actually have to drink extra sugar. LT, a cautionary tale for you, you son of a gun. How are you and what are you drinking? Uh, I'm drinking water. I would love to have some of what Josh is drinking. Josh, tell us your secret. My secret is glimeparide. My doctor... Uh, is this very tiny little Asian lady who uh, wants to prescribe to me like 20 different pills. And when I ask her, can I just change my diet or exercise more? She goes, why? I can just give you pills. She hates all Eastern medicine and all holistic things. She just wants to give me pills all day. So uh, I'm going to start taking glimiparide uh, just to to get on your bandwagon. And uh, Mikey... How are you doing, and uh, what are you drinking tonight? I'm doing fine. I I have already finished my dead partner, and I am halfway through with my yin, yingling chaser. But i got to tell you, I think you should stop going to Dr. Pez. I love Dr. Pez. She just, she's hilarious. Uh, and uh, like I said, she doesn't want me to change anything about my lifestyle. She just wants to give me pills. It's a great doctor. Yeah, and candy comes out of her goiter. Who doesn't love that? <laughs> Speaking of goiters, today we're going to be talking about supervillains. Not just any supervillains, though. Supervillains related to the Green Lantern or the Green Lantern Corps. Tom, why don't you start us off? Who's your favorite villain of the Green Lantern? Well, I have two. One of them I'll talk about during my social justice part, but everyone knows that one of my favorite supervillains of all time is Solomon Grundy. Born on what day? I forget. Josh? Uh, Tuesday? Solomon Grundy, born on Monday. Come on, man. You're the rhymer of the group. I thought thought maybe he was late. He was not a, uh, uh, neither a premature baby or a late baby. Solomon Grundy uh, was, is, is a zombie who is mostly made out of plant matter, which made him a terrific foil for the original Green Lantern, whose ring could not affect wood. Now, Solomon Grundy has had an amazing, uh, arc over the years, Uh, No longer being just a uh, plant-based zombie, uh, but uh, being at times both a sympathetic character that we can kind of get behind and relate, and also just a monstrous murder machine uh, that we can root for while he's getting the hell beat out of him. Uh, And also uh, one of the few uh, DC or even Marvel characters that hardly ever gets to wear pants. So Solomon Grundy is my vote for one of the greatest villains to come out of the Green Lantern uh, things. Uh, how about you there, LT? Who's your favorite Green Lantern villain? really like the idea of the first Lantern as the Lantern villain. Um, you know, there was something nice about this idea of preceding the Green Lantern Corps, this, this failed entity, the first Lantern, that was supposed to kind of do the entire job of the Corps and, uh, and just kind of not really doing it. And almost destroyed all of creation and had all of the different light spectrum core had to fight the first lantern in order to save this universe um, in the Green Lantern's New Guardians um, book. And uh, I, I thought that was a great idea. Well, that's a good one. Josh, who's your favorite Green Lantern villain? I haven't really decided. I haven't really read enough to uh, to come around to having the... My, my favorite Green Lantern villain. Uh, I mean, I suppose... Do we count Vandal Savage? Can we count Vandal Savage? Okay. Yeah, uh, of course. 
I haven't really seen enough of the interaction to, to claim that he's one, but I've always liked the concept and the idea of Vandal, just the, uh, just the accrual of so much information over millennia makes him as about as dangerous as they come, and that's always really what, uh, uh, what uh, sort of drawn me to him. So there was, uh, it always reminds me of this movie, The Seventh Sign. Seal? Sign? I think it's Sign. sign. Demi Moore, right? Uh, it's all about the, uh, the breaking of the seals, end of the world, but the, uh, the old priest who is hunting down uh, the, uh, the seals is a man named Cartophilius, and he is the soldier who struck Christ and was doomed to walk the earth forever whom I based tons of characters off in uh, tabletop role-playing games, by the way. Uh, but yeah, so he just has like a, all this accumulated knowledge, and he's actually just sick of wandering the earth and is trying to get the end of the world to happen. But it just reminds me of that same concept of Vandal Savage, just collecting so much information and just being that sort of jack-of-all-trades, and it's this huge intellect that has just accumulated accumulation of uh, information over an immortal lifespan. So a quick note about the Vandal Savage. He, he was a Green Lantern villain. He first appeared in Green Lantern number 10. That's the uh, Golden Age Green Lantern. He was a Crow magnon who got exposed to a meteor that gave him his immortality. And he has actually a superhero counterpart, uh, the Immortal Man, who keeps on dying and getting resurrected as different people. And he's in an eternal struggle against Vandal Savage. But Green Lantern was definitely his first villain. Or, excuse me, was his first hero that he fought. Yeah, I wasn't sure. I mean, I, he's I mean, he's all over the map in the DC universe and I I know that they, you know, they've they've fought and come into contact in the past, but I wasn't sure where he actually what his origin story was, his actual origin or our first appearance was. That's interesting. Well, Mike, yeah. why don't you tell us your favorite uh, Green Lantern villain then? In order to talk about my favorite Green Lantern villain, I have to go back to my secret origin of collecting superhero comics. In 1974, my dad brings me down to Gail's newsstand and says, go ahead, pick out a comic book. And I say, okay. And I look through the racks and I decide today's the day I'm a big boy. I'm six years old. I'm going to get a superhero comic. And I look and I can get a Batman comic or I could get a Flash comic. or a, But I'm like, I can get the Justice League comic and I get all of those characters all in one. So I picked up Justice League number 111. And in that, a supervillain called Libra is forming the Injustice Gang. And one of the rogues that he chooses is the Tattooed Man, who is a Green Lantern villain. So, and because this is the first Green Lantern comic I've ever read, I have a weird thing in my childhood mind where I think... This is his main nemesis. The tattooed man' uh, secret origin is he's a sailor living in Coast City, where Green Lantern is, and he goes and robs some chemicals, which when he gets exposed to them, he gets the mysterious power to be able to manifest things through his mind that come out of the chemicals. But rather than carrying around a big vat of chemicals everywhere he goes, he takes the chemicals, infuses them with an ink, and tattoos his body so he can just touch the tattoo and that image on that tattoo comes to life and it, it can attack or do whatever he wants it to do the cool thing is because the apparently the chemicals were yellow even though they got infused into the ink green lantern couldn't stop them with his ring because of his weakness to yellow even though those the the creatures coming out didn't actually look yellow so that was kind of a weird thing that I had a hard time wrapping my head around, but I was six years old, so I didn't really have that much of a problem. However, it skewed my version of what tattoos were because, again, I'm only six years old, and the only other person I know is my Uncle Wes, who was in the Navy, and he has two tattoos. One is of an anchor, and the other is of a Polynesian hula dancer. So the next time after I read that comic, we went down to Connecticut to visit my Aunt Arlene and Uncle Wes. I was staring at my Uncle Wes till finally I went over and tried to touch his tattoos to see if I could get that hula dancer to come to life. It's a noble cause. Yeah, so the tattooed man always has a special place in my heart as a Green Lantern villain. All right. 
right, that's that's a great villain. Do we have any notable runners up? Uh, mine actually would have been the tattooed man, so everyone take a drink for that. My runner up would be Parallax, uh, an embodiment of the yellow light of fear, who once possessed Hal Jordan, who uh, nearly destroyed the Green Lantern Corps and was uh, inhabiting the central bat- battery on Oa and was uh, supposedly the reason for the uh, yellow light impurity um, that that was the reason that the Green Lanterns had a problem with yellow light. And because of Parallax, they also had a problem. The Green Lantern, the, uh, excuse me, the Guardians of the Universe made a mistake when they were selecting people to be Green Lanterns. They were picking people without fear. However, when Parallax got out, it showed them their, their problem. They should have been taking people who can overcome great fear. And that's what they've started doing now in their recruits. Anyone else with a uh, good runner-up? Well, uh, I, like, I gotta say, I, I haven't read a lot about it, but I do like um, the, uh, the character design for the, or the, at least the, the short origin for Black Hand becoming the Black Lantern. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. The uh, Black Lantern, uh, that whole Blackest Night series is excellent. If you get a chance and you want to get just dive right into the whole Green Lantern mythology, the, Jeff Johns created a masterpiece when they did the whole Darkest Night series. However, I think if I'm going to go with another Green Lantern villain, I'm going to go with his ultimate villain, and that's Sinestro, who is sometimes a villain, and he's also sometimes a hero. He's got kind of the same story as Green Lantern. He's an archaeologist. He's out on a dig. A spaceship crashes, and the Green Lantern Corps member sends the ring out to find somebody who's fearless, finds Sinestro. Sinestro goes to where the spaceship is, and the Green Lantern's like, oh, I'm sorry, I was mistaken. I'm actually not that bad. If you give me the ring back, I may be able to contact the other Green Lanterns so they can come rescue me. And Sinestro's like, screw that, I just got the most powerful weapon in the universe, and kills the guy. (laughs) Um, So it's, it's close. Sinestro, also a good friend to Hal Jordan and helped train Hal Jordan. He did. He did help train Hal Jordan and the Sinestro Corps, the yellow in the uh, Green Lantern's emotional spectrum based on fear. Uh, If you get a chance to check out the Sinestro comic from 2014 to 2016, it really it's really one of the best series that takes a supervillain and dissects him into what makes him tick and why he's the way he is. Well, I guess that's about it for villains. We've had all our runners up. And remember what I say, don't hate, well, don't, uh, don't diss what you hate, just promote what you love and have a great day. I've yet to find my place I'm guarding 2814 I don't know why it's chosen me But from the corner of my eye I catch a glimpse of evil light 